Hello everybody and welcome to my build video for the Magicka Nightblade. Now this patch I'll be working on a number of builds for this as you will have seen in a couple of clips I have released already. So I do often get comments in my build videos you haven't shown it works, it doesn't work or things like that. Just check the previous two videos, they show two different versions that are working. One for Breton, the most recent and one for Argonian before that. Actually neither of those are the build that I'm in right now. I have two builds for Argonian. One is light mega burst, but I think it's slightly squishier. That's the one that I was using in the clip. This is my preferred build, so this is the one I'm gonna make a video for. Now, after I do make the Argonian and Breton, I'm looking at making a melee build and a bomb build as well. So plenty of magic ray builds to come. I've already finished my magic plot. That is already ready to make as well, but there'll be more builds to come on top of that as well. So no complaints, plenty of builds. Anyway, this match night blade is going to be Ar Argonian, and this is all about countering the anti-heal meta. If you did catch my previous vitality setup, we're going down a similar track here. But we've made some important adjustments to maximize our healing and keep that immortality system going. And our burst is notably higher. Thank you very much, pay to win patch. No problem. So, the build today that we're going to be going for is as follows. We're using Tuka Jaunet. This is the perfect monster set for this playstyle. Because we're also going to be using the pay to win ring. Malakath. This is so broken. you just got to use this on every build. I'm sorry, if you're not using a melee based match blade, maybe a stand blade, this should be on your build. Like, I'm so sure this is... It's best on everything. Doesn't matter that match night blade has really good crit passives. It is still worth using. And on match blade this patch, I really recommend heavy armor. So we are five heavy using this ring, which means we don't waste the crit passives of light. This amps up the Kajana damage enormously. We've got 21k tools, we've got 25% more damage on that, plus modifiers from CP, minus battle scaling. This hits so hard on players, our burst is astronomically high no matter what we did. Even if we had terrible damage behind this, this would still hit hard. In the end, more procs, more fun with Malakath, and you want to go heavy. So if you don't take anything else from this video, go heavy and Malakath and procs. Right, but this is the build you want to run. Five alchemists on the front bar. We're going to be using the body, the boots, and the legs. And then your front bar weapon should be an infused flame staff, a shock glyph. In terms of the tri stats, we are using them on the legs, the body, and the helmet only. We're not using them on the other four pieces. Our other set is going to be back bar warlock. We're using the gloves, the sash, two jewelry. You obviously uh, can't change this because you do need to keep the heavy on here. So you do have to get the jewelry, sadly. And then we're using a sixth piece, since this is Warlock, on the back bar. Now the reason you want to use six on the back bar is we are using Malakath, which is a one piece. If we were to just slot five, we end up wasting this one open slot. By using six, we instead maintain the recovery on the front bar and at least get something out of that free slot. So it's a really nice way of making the most. Now a common question you could get is you could also build two, five, two, one. What I mean by this is two monster set, five piece, let's say Alchemist, two Willpower, a Master Staff and a Mouse from Resto Staff. I'd recommend against that. I think Fear is an invaluable defense mechanic on a Nightblade. Even though Master Staff does give you the damage and there are a few people who prefer offensively, I can't recommend enough sticking with Fear. I think it's a much better skill, but if you really do, go for it. Our traits for the time being are all impen. Now I am looking at making a bit of a research video into the different traits. There's quite a high possibility reinforced might outperform impen now on the body maybe even on heavy helmet, shoulders, legs, and boots. So I'm gonna look into that. Also, it might be considerable to take too well fitted since stamina sustain is the only weakness of this build and even that is okay. We're an Argonian, it's hard to run out of stamina. All of our jewelry glyphs are gonna be infused potion cooldown. The reason for this is we want to keep a very strong potion up and we're gonna be using that as a sustain. This is essential because our pot is what makes this build. Vitality builds are great. We're using a pot that gives us expedition, health, and vitality. And with the cooldown on the pot, we have this up almost constantly. Our pot cooldown is 21 seconds. We have these buffs, vitality and expedition, for 16 seconds. We have 72, I think it is, percent uptime of extremely good buff vitality and lingering health, even more percentage, talking about 80% there, with expedition carry us through all the time. This healing is so noticeable. If you've ever used Malibeth, imagine having that up 24-7. It's exactly that. 
and Alchemist carries our damage through so that despite the low Magicka, with the low Potion cooldown, we get 100% uptime near as damn it on Alchemist, which means our damage is still fine. So, to show you the survivability, we're going to challenge a friend of mine here, and then I'll talk about the skills. And it's going to DPS us. I'm going to place all my hots up. Here's in a PvE build, just to give this demonstration. And we're just going to heal through this. He's on a pure PvE DPS build with Zahn. And we're doing just fine. No matter what he does, our healing is going to be straight through it. Now we're going to put entropy up to get the sorcery buff on our spell damage heals. Even more so. The healing is huge. No hands at this point, just to show you. Obviously, I've got to stick the buffs up, but yeah. The healing on this build is really enormous. And worst comes to worst, we've got this bad boy. So, now to show you the offensive pressure of this. I'm just going to tell Anne to stay full health. So, this hits incredibly hard. Now, this guy is in PvE gear. Obviously, some people might point it out, which means he's in Divines. It doesn't actually matter. I can't crit. Malakath prevents me critting. It just gives a flat damage increase. So, I buff myself up. This is your order offensively. I will go over skills anyway. Obviously, we need that buff all the time. We need Merciless buffed. We need Elemental Drain and Entropy on. Our first light attack needs to be on the back bar to get this going well, because we want to place at least one of our main buffs. You could do more. So, for example, I can go one image, one siphoning attacks, one front, one in cap, one fear, and then next light attack, even if I don't Merciless, we'll kill him because the fist comes up for 9k. If I'm merciless, we've got another 9k behind that, plus the funnel pressure. We get a very, very juicy nuke. So this is how the offensive style of this build works. We're timing the merciless with the damage. I'm gonna show that one more time because Anne lagged to do this properly. Get you the full offensive window, explain how the skills work. Once he respawns, there we go. Okay, so. One more time just to show you that rotation, this time on the front bar mostly. We're going to put Elemental Drain up, we're going to put Entropy up, we're going to cast one back bar dot. We need five more light attacks. So we go light attack one, light attack two, light attack three. I'm going to give him a chance to heal. Light attack three. Okay, but it's a little hard because he's dying so fast I can't actually hear him. But you get the idea. We're basically building up these five light attacks to get Kajana to read exactly what this does. Dealing damage with a light attack puts a bone stack on your enemy for five seconds. Once you get five stacks, you do this monster fist and we CC them before that fist. So, we hit four light attacks, we light attack fear. That fifth light attack delays into the Kajalne proc. The fear hits just before it, which means Kajalne hits after, and then we're gonna hit a Merciless and a Kajalne at the same time. That's how we hit them. Okay, and three to go. So, to show you our skill bar, we go as follows. We are running with Entropy. This is going to be major sorcery since we cannot get that off at our pot. But in the end, you win what the pot anyway. It gives us crit, which is a complete waste of time in Malakath. Our second skill is Swallow Soul. Although the tooltip is low right now, our spell damage buffed with Alchemist without even a glyph is 2.8k. So we're sitting on a solid amount of spell damage. Obviously, I can't show that. I need to buff Alchemist and I need combat for that. But as we've shown with the pot glyphs, that is always up. So no problem at all. Third skill, Elemental Drain. The penetration is really important. Penetration is the only thing that increases damage off procs. So even if you wanted to use a skill there that gives damage and somehow gives you minor magical still, you definitely are gonna to wanna to use Elemental Drain. The pen is totally invaluable. Either way, it's too good a skill to miss on any build that's using a Destro in my view. Number four is Merciless. This is our main burst skill. If you don't know what this is, um, you might wanna spend some more time reading into it. This is your main skill to get burst as Magic Knight Blade and Fear as our CC. We prefer fear to a single target CC, especially defensively, but also against blocking or dodging targets. It's very important to take this over reach, in my view. Soul Harvest is going to outdo Incap this patch, even though we could CC with Incap with Kajana, it could be quite good. The Defile is just too good. Healing is already very, very bad on most classes, if not all classes not using Vitality. This makes it even worse. So good luck healing. Not only have we got this big burst, now we've got huge pressure with it as well. On the back bar, Image is going to be our main kite skill, gives us minor maim. We're going to be using Rapid Regen, the five second morph. You definitely want this morph. In the end, your healing for Vitality only increases self-healing. So by increasing your, the size of the initial self-heal, we get more benefit from the pot. 
If we're using the 10 second morph that shares, the tooltip is lower, which means we get less benefit from the pot. We're gonna skip three. A sick number four is Dark Cloak. This is the healing morph. This scales off our health, which gives Alchemist even more benefit, Heavy even, even more benefit, and Argonian even, even, even more benefit, because it all generates us this massive max health pool, which is gonna increase the healing of Dark Cloak alongside our vitality. Number five is Siphoning Attacks, yet another heal and more sustain, perfect, more heals, more fun. It's all stacking behind Vitality. And lastly, we've got Restore on the back bar. You want the Life Giver Morph, the one that automatically casts skills. Now, number three, we currently are using Phantasmal Escape. This is a snare remove. There's no point in using Race Against Time unless you are poorer. So these pots are particularly expensive. If you are poorer, there is a version of these pots that just does lingering health and vitality. That's a very cheap potion. I can't remember the ingredients, but there's nothing fancy. This one requires Mother of Pearls to cost a lot. If that's the case, simply use just the lingering and vitality pot and replace that with Race Against Time. If not, I suggest this. Major Evasion is a very good buff. That is the skills. I hope that is somewhat explainable. If you do have questions, ask. No problem. Now we're going to look at our CP because there's a fair bit going on and our main sheet. So the sheet is kind of hard to say, but we're using Atronach Mundus and we're using the new Trifood, the gold Trifood called Bewitch, just to show you what that one looks like. It is this one here. CP as follows in the green tree, you are using 72 in Warlord, 1 in Siphoner and 19 in Sprinter. Quite a lot in Sprinter because we are using a build that has good, uh, good speed initially, meaning the buff on the sprint is even better. And we want to reduce that cost because stamina, again, is the weakest point on this build. In the green tree, we're stacking recovery as high as possible. It's another thing that's harder to get. 75 in Arcanist. Now, I can imagine a lot of people saying use Lich over Warlock. We're in Heavy. It doesn't synergize well with recovery passives. In the end, Warlock gives you a better return. But if you do not have Warlock, because we've got this high pool in Arcanist, Lich is also somewhat okay. I would still suggest going for Warlock, though. 11 in Mooncalf, this is going to help the little bit of stamina recovery. You could also put these in health. That's not such a bad thing. In the end, healthy is a noticeable amount of healing. The percentage that you're going to get from it is fairly negligible. Um, but either way, we're not going to get very much from these 11 points. 16 in Befile puts you right on the sweet spot for a 33% Defile, which is very tasty. 56 in Tumbling for Roll Dodge and just the 20 in Block, since we're not going to block that often. We're mostly going to dodge damage. In the blue tree, 37 in Blessed One, increase the healing decently, but there's no point in going over the top with crit. Now, although we can't cause critical damage because of Malakath, we can still crit our heals. And so the quick scaling up to 20 points, in my view, is well worth it. I really do think that going for 20 in Elfborn is worth the points. You could even go as high as 40. I think that's excessive. I think you're better off distributing elsewhere then, but I would advise going for 20. If you find you don't need the crit heals, feel free to move them elsewhere. But in the end, as you're gonna see, we've got quite a big amount of points in most trees. So they're not gonna do much else anywhere else. 64, an elemental expert for all of our damage. This will increase Kajalnet, but mostly increasing Kajalnet is our pen. So we step this nice and high, 59. Nine in staff expert. Light attacks are quite a big amount of your pressure as a magic and light blade. You're talking 20%, 25% damage. So it's very worth stacking this decently. And then 81 in direct damage, since this also increases light attack and our proc and all of our damage. Nothing in there. 72 in ironclad to reduce direct damage. 32 in crit resist. This is quite a bit lower because of the changes to your crit resist. Our base crit resist is higher. And so we can afford to now build back into dots, which are more prevalent for many procs this patch, as a lot of other builds are using proc plus manica. So 40 in fixed skinned helps to compensate. 37 and 37 Elemental and Harley. It's worth noting we don't get either the Unchained or the Reinforced Passive, but since we're rarely ever gonna block and we're not using stamina skills, neither of those actually matter. And last but not least, free and Expert Defender for Light Attacks. You could put this up to nine from your crit if you wish. Um, I kind of prefer the crit in this case, but it's a hit and miss, both are fine. And 49 in Quick Recovery. Our base resists are fine. We've got Heavy and all of that, we're good to go. I think I've got everything, but knowing me, I'm sure I've missed something in the explanation. I have. Now I remember something else. There's one other important pot. So not only do we need this pot, but this pot is worth always having a few of, and that is this by here. Immunity to knock black, stealth detection, and magicka. We're gonna use this in three different occasions. If our stamina sustain is in dire straits, we're gonna pop this pot, because it will prevent us getting CC'd, it's gonna protect you. If you're against a Stamina Knight Blade that's not pressuring you but trying to nuke you, the hots are less important and finding them is more important. 
And lastly, if our Magicka is absolutely screwed, you can pop this pot. But for the most part, I suggest trying to focus on vitality. The healing is so important, it's massive. But this is a backup option if you need. No matter how expensive this pot is, I would suggest keeping 10 or 20 on you just for the right situation. It will make a big difference in the right moments. I only use a few of these. I've been playing this build on and off and I've used 10. So it's very rare that I pop that pot, but it really does matter in some fights. And yeah, take the cheaper version of this one if needs be. I hope that will somewhat help you. Good luck on your Argonia Magnite Blade. Breton will be coming out next and I will see you in another build video.